Welcome back to the Comics Multiverse. Today we have a returning guest who was here about three years ago when he was doing another project for Kickstarter, and uh, he has a new one. Um, so he's back to talk about this one. George O'Connor is uh, currently kickstarting Vampires on Mars on Kickstarter. So let's bring him in, catch up, and find out about his new project. Hey, how's it going? It's going very well, man. Thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, come back and chat with us. Um, before we get started talking about um, your latest project, um, yeah. since it's been a while, um, why don't you kind of give a little bit of background about yourself, uh, you know, sure. both as a as a comic book reader and as a creator? Absolutely. Uh, so I got into comics. I was a Claremont X Men baby, you know. So those early '80s X Men books uh, sucked me right in. Um, I had, I have an older brother and at the time he was the one bringing me and my younger brother to the comic book store. He went off to college. Uh, mom and dad didn't have so much of an interest to go into the comic book store at that point. Uh, so after about three or four years kind of, you know, waned off of comics, but I'm a geek at heart. So I was always keeping an eye on it. Um, and it was around 2000. Eight, 2008 San Diego Comic-Con and New York Comic-Con went as a fan, um, sat in a couple, you know, how to make a comic panels. Uh, and I was like, oh, this could be a new creative avenue. Um, I've been working on short films uh, leading up to that. And kind of one of the rules of thumb is if you can't shoot it, don't write it. So, you know, if you don't have access to a pirate ship, don't write a pirate movie. So a lot of what I was writing could be filmed at my house. Uh, and so, you know, realizing like comics could be, you know, a visual medium where more was possible, right? With the right collaborators um, that you could tell different types of stories. Uh, and that really appealed to me. And so about 2010, did my first comic with my friend Griffin S. It's called Healed. Uh, and haven't stopped since. And uh, like I mentioned before, um, you did a uh, book called Charlie's Spots. And yeah. how did, And I know, I think it was maybe a year or so ago, you kind of did like a collected uh, yeah. volume of that? Yes. So um, the story of Charlie's Spot is we kickstarted the first issue uh, and it went great. We got picked up uh, for distribution through Comics Experience. Um, and the direct market during the pandemic was what it was. Um, and, you know, we got support. Uh, but at the end of it, um, you know, we, we had a warehouse full of books. Um, and Kickstarter is a great way to directly connect creators to an audience. You know, whether it's an existing audience or striking out and literally being able to connect with people worldwide and sending them their books. So uh, we relaunched that Kickstarter. Where we went back to Kickstarter for Charlie Spot 1 through 4, the complete series. Um, and that was wonderfully fantastic as well. Um, so, you know, being able to send books to, I think Austria was one of the places we got to send books to. And like without Kickstarter, without the internet, you know, without it being 2023, 2024, that can't happen. Um, but it can now. And that's incredibly exciting. And you're back with a, a new project, um, Vampires on Mars. Kind of yes. tell us what the you know big picture of the story is. So the story of Vampires on Mars is about a desperate billionaire trying to be the first person to send a manned mission to Mars and realizing uh, he can't and he is losing billions by the moment. And so the only way to do it, uh, he is convinced that, well, if you turn your astronauts into vampires, then maybe they can survive the trip. Um, and it turns into a complete bloody chaotic mess. Um, so it's a, it's a mix of sci-fi horror and dark comedy. But the story behind the story is how much of our humanity do we have to sacrifice to achieve our goals? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it, that was a great kind of like uh, North Star as we were putting all of this together and it's one of my favorite things that comics and sci-fi does really well is it can take you know a, a an outlandish idea that you know that should come from something called vampires on mars 
um, but then really dig into a universal question to help fuel and put meat on that bone. So uh, kind of, now let's kind of go a little deeper. Um, who are the, yeah. you know, it sounds like there's a billionaire character and who are the main, who are the main characters that, uh, you know, we meet in the book? Uh, so our, the main, the main character we're following, her name is Hannah. She's a 300-year-old vampire who, kind of like me, has loved space forever and dreamed about, you know, what it would be like to visit other planets. And she's been, like I said, she's been on this world for 300 years doing all the kind of like classic vampire stuff we've seen in, in culture, in media, but she's never lost her love and curiosity of that, of, of, mm -hmm. Le you know, she is bored with being a vampire and she thinks there's something more for her outside of literally Earth. Um, and finally, the world catches up to her goals and her vision. Um, so when all of a sudden, you know, we start sending capsules and men into space onto the moon, um, she starts realizing, oh, this might be my chance. Um, and when this was originally conceived about 10 or 11 years ago, the idea would have been, oh, you know, NASA, she's going to infiltrate NASA. Um, and then as, you know, we found the team to put this together and I kind of revisited that original pitch, that's not the world we live in anymore. You know, uh, it is, it is billionaires who are trying to make this work. Um, and that added a fun wrinkle of you know well how how would someone infiltrate you know basically a billionaire's rocket program uh and so that was a fun character to draw of of our billionaire gary um and then we've also got the main astronauts that are well that are turned into vampires whether they want to or not um and what we get to explore with those four is when great power opportunity is dangled in front of you. Are you going to follow that? You know, or, you know, are you going to sell out or not? That's kind of the, the bigger question. Um, I kind of look at books like Chew from John Lehman, Rob Gilroy. I mean, I love that book because it was big and it was over the top, but it had a great sense of humor I'm sorry, and it had a great sense of humor, and there was a groundness to it that everything felt real while being also over the top. Um, so we've got that vibe and humor with the claustrophobic chase of aliens, where like there is there is something chaotic going on in this tin hull as it's being shot through space. So uh, who, are the, who are the rest of the creative team that are you're working with yep. on the book? Uh, Fernando Pinto is the artist and co-creator. Ellie Wright, uh, the Ringo-nominated colorist, is making this thing just pop. And Ringo-nominated letter Justin Birch is tying it all together. And they are they're an absolute dream team to work with. Um, a couple of years ago, I did an anthology called Toddler Apocalypse, um, a series of eight-page stories. And part of the very selfish reason I wanted to do that book was my Twitter timeline was getting filled with amazing artists. And, you know, I would just scroll every day. It's like, oh, I'd love to work with them, love to work with them, love to work with them. And, you know, doing short stories is, a, is an easier way to work with somebody. Like, it's easier to slip eight pages into their schedule. Uh, and then you get to work with a lot of different people. And uh, Fernando, Ellie, Fernando and Ellie uh, were, you know, fantastic absolutely fantastic to work with and justin was the single letterer on that book and he was able to tie all of these different stories and uh artistic vibes all together and he made that thing sing so when it came time to put this series together uh they really were this dream team uh of not only people that i had admired but i also worked with and knew like on top of their fantastic artistic abilities they're true professionals and really good people and for me right now working with really good people is just as important as working with talented people and i got real lucky that all three are talented and good people 
Nice. So how 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 is it, you know, kind of is it a different frame of mind you have to kind of put yourself into because, you know, between writing, you know, vampires on Mars and yeah. Charlie's spot. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like on opposite, opposite ends of the spectrum. So is it, uh, it what like, has been like? Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, one of the things I'm hoping that I'm leveling up these days as a writer is kind of like understanding character more and character motivation that you can, you, you know, I could put, I could put my 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 homeless busker from Charlie's spot into Vampires on Mars and tell an interesting story there. And I can take my 300 year old vampire and and put her in kind of like the busker community of of, you know, Boston Common or, you know, Central Park. And we could tell an interesting story there. Um, what's been fun is wrapping is making sure that the bigger story, the bigger universal question is in there. Right with Charlie Spot, it was: Are we really as alone as we think we are? Um, wrapped up in a magical realism story, and this one, you know, again is like, you know, where's the line of where you sell out for, you know, the riches and the glory? Uh, and we just we just happen to wrap that up in vampires because I'm a space nerd, um, and you know the the very beginning of vampires on Mars was an eight hour drive back home from Baltimore comic-con one year and, you know, just driving with friends. And what do you do? You just BS your way for eight hours. And one of the things I had said was like, I would consider turning into a vampire if that meant I'd be alive for when all of the cool space stuff happens, landing on Mars, discovering, you know, worlds that could be, you know, livable, all of that awesome astronomy stuff. Um, and a lot of kind of our mile markers of the story fell into place real quick as we in the car were just kicking this around, you know, to the point it's like, oh man, I, I know what this story is and I think I got to tell it. Um, the gestation period took longer than I wanted. Um, originally I had a pitch for it again, about 10 years ago, uh, that didn't get picked up, um, and self-publishing, wasn't what it is like, you know, back then what it is now. Also, I really didn't kind of have the tool set for, you know, self-publishing on a higher level. Um, so come back around, you know, nine, 10 years later, I've worked with Fernando um, and he posts, um, he posted some pages from a pitch uh, in kind of a manga style that you see in Vampires on Mars. And he posted these pages and said, I'd love to do a, a book in this style, but nobody ever wants to do it. And I looked at it, I was like, that's exactly the style I want for Vampires on Mars. So, you know, waiting, uh, I'm not great at waiting. I am not a journey over the destination type of guy. I'm very much a, let's just get there because that's mm -hmm. what we're trying to do. Um, but waiting, let me work with Fernando uh, in a style he wanted to work in. And I think whenever you can give your collaborators more room and more agency about the thing, uh, every, it always comes out better, you know? So, so working with Fernando and giving him all the room to do his thing, uh, just made it better. Um, I think he had more fun. I think you can see on every page, um, that he's having a blast and he is, doing things that Fernando Pinto is great at, you know, when it needs to be funny, he is funny when it needs to be energetic and action packed, he's doing that. Um, so uh, selfishly, I also got to see one of my favorite artists do their thing and give them a spotlight to shine. Um, and then, you know, again, you bring in Ellie, Wright. I'll never understand, you know, the color wheel as well as her. Um, and she's sending, pages to us and Fernando and I are having side conversations, giggling, you know, at how great they're coming out. Um, and, you know, and Justin, I think is one of the, the, uh, I don't know, unsung heroes of comics right now. Um, he is a tremendous letter, an incredible work ethic, super nice guy. Um, and he just does killer work, um, with no ego, even though he should. And I keep trying, I keep trying to pump up his ego. <laughs> um, but, uh, but he's having none of it. 
Um, but yeah, so that's that's kind of how it all goes. Like, yes, there there is an idea that I could call mine. Um, but the point and what I love about comics as a medium is when it shines, it's when everybody is getting to, you know, put their creativity, their their experiences into it and running with it. It always ends up better that way. And so let's talk a little bit about the, the campaign now. Um, yeah. What are you kind of offering for the different reward levels? Sure. Um, so very excited about the two variant covers that we have uh, available for this one. So we've got the standard cover that's from uh, Fernando and Ellie. Uh, and then Alex Cormick, who I have known for years and years and years. Um, again, talk about hardworking, nice guys. Uh, he uh, has a variant cover for us. Uh, and then Jacob Edgar, who is more recently someone that I discovered, uh, but seems to just be killing it. Um, he did uh, the ones with Brian Michael Bendis, um, mm -hmm. and he's just doing some fantastic work. Again, I admired him for a while, you know, like, oh, if I could find a project for him. Uh, and then when this came around, he was already doing stuff with uh, Bendis. And I was like, oh, it might be too late, but I reached out anyways, and he carved out room to put his uh, variant cover together. So we've got three covers to choose from. Uh, being, I don't know if it's showing up, but the rack of guitars back there. I am a musician. I am a metal guy. So you're damn right. We're making metal covers for this one. So we are doing the, the pure, the pure uh, cover from Ellie and Fernando, all art, no trade dress on a metal cover that uh, I am very excited for. I've bought from, bought those from other campaigns in the past and I've always been a little jealous of it. Uh, and I think if you go to the campaign page and you see uh, what Ellie and Fernando put together for their cover, it's going to bang um, when when we put it on metal. Um, and then as of right now, when we're talking, uh, Fernando's doing a limited edition award reward of drawing you as a vampire in your astronaut graduation outfit. So if you're familiar with kind of like NASA's <laughs> astronaut graduation photos, Fernando's put together one of you from our ver uh, Vampire Astronaut Academy. And I believe there's one left at the moment uh, for there. And then just like everything, um, I also love introducing people to my back catalog. Um, Vampires and Mars will be the seventh book that I've worked on. And if you look behind me, they kind of like all live on the other side of that wall. Um, so not only uh, do I want to entertain you, uh, everybody in the house will appreciate a little bit more room that we're going to get back from that storage area. <laughs> I can imagine. Um, so it, yeah. Go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, I, lo I love... I, I've made I've been making stuff since, stuff since I was 15. So I feel like in every place I've lived, there's always been a corner of CDs, DVDs, you know, now comic books of of stuff that I've made and can't wait to get rid of in the most <laughs> loving in the most loving way possible. Yeah. So I mean, having run other Kickstarters in the past, is there anything, you know? besides, you know, using what you've learned from those that you're noticing maybe different about, you know, this one? Um, on, the, on the fear of being like too inside baseball, what I and kind of like my peers have noticed is the beginning and the end points have become so much more important. And unfortunately, that means the middle section where I am technically right now. Um, you know, we've now entered the second week of the campaign. So that kind of like quiet period gets a lot quieter, a lot faster. So, you know, we talk about Kickstarter, you know, you know, for everything it is, it's also a mental uh, gymnastics routine. You know, um, you start off hot and you're like, Oh, if this keeps going, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have, you know, I don't know, you know, a, a Brendan Sanderson, you know, I'm going to make a million dollars. Right. And then it all and then reality sets in and you're like, OK, this is this is a grind. You know, it is talking about the project. It's a marathon, not a sprint. hundred percent. You know, this this is the middle of the marathon where you're like, I could just quit right now. Like, I, I see the train over there. I could just, you know, I could just go on the train back to my car. Um, 
so you know so the job really becomes you know continuing to talk about it and luckily you know this is this is a project that's easy to talk about um i really like it i you know for better for worse i i took the rule of thumb i wrote the book i would want to read you know um i love books like middle west um, that's the one that really hit me the most recent where you're reading, you know, this, this sci-fi fantasy comic book, uh, you know, and you're like, oh, this is, this is fun. And then you turn the page and they say the most human thing that crushes you in the best way possible. Um, and, you know, that's the stuff that, that inspires me. Um, and that's the bar that I, you know, set for myself. So, so, you know, like I said, I've thought about this book a lot. I've, you know, there a lot of why, why this book, why right now? Um, and I think, you know, again, beyond the sci-fi part, which is always fun. It's always fun to have vampires beating each other up, blood splattering everywhere, you know, with a good dose of dark humor. But, you know, that, that sellout question, you know, the, do you have to sell your soul to be at the top, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to achieve, to grow all that stuff. I mean, I, that's, that's very real. Um, that I think we see played out a lot. Um, mm -hmm. and you know, it's probably not something anyone wants to read about, but you wrap it up in vampires and you hurdle them into space. Um, now we can have some fun while exploring those questions. And then again, if, I mean, I hope it's come through, I could talk about Fernando, Ellie, and Justin all day and all night. Um, you know, again, they, on their own, I would buy their books without hesitation. Um, but now getting to work with them, you know, first on those shorter stories and now, you know, 80 pages and a year and a half or whatever it is. Yeah. I mean, I can tell you right now, they're fantastic. You know, they, they all accolades they've earned, all accolades they've gotten, they have earned, and I'm telling you, they deserve more. Now, is this a this is the mini series, not a one shot, or correct? For yeah, it's a four issue series. Okay. And um, bringing you behind the curtain, first issue is done. If we had to, I could send it to the printer right now, and we'd be good to go. Um, for better, for worse, that's how I like to run my kickstarters. Um, when somebody backs a campaign, that's a lot of trust that you know you're that they're gonna get the thing uh period um but then they're gonna get the thing uh when it's promised so i am i would much rather take that risk like you know what whatever it is shelling out the money um you know patience lead time all of that so when the campaign ends and the funds clear i can go right to the printers and go all right let's go and it gets here faster. I can get it out faster. You know, again, I've packed almost 500 Kickstarters at this point. And there's always one that's like, oh, right. I backed that a year and a half ago. You know? Um, yeah. well, I'm sure but, there's ones that backed a couple years ago and still are. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, again, it's I, I want to be a good representative of Kickstarter. Like, beyond... Yeah, you know, beyond hoping to build trust, you know, George O'Connor to whoever backs it, I believe in Kickstarter as a platform. I believe in crowdfunding as a platform and a way to build connections and to tell stories um, like this that are weird, but like I freaking believe in it. And, you know, the team, we all came together and put everything we could into it. Um, and this is a way to give it directly to somebody. So, like I said, I believe in the platform, I believe in crowdfunding. And so I also feel like it's part of my job to ensure that if you're backing it, you continue to have a good feeling about Kickstarter and the platform. I know we both kind of have hard outs uh, here in a little bit. So I'll just, we'll play one question Hit instead me. of five. <laughs> uh, well, we could, let's go speed round. Let's give it a shot. Okay. Um, first question, uh, personal, uh, uh, Mount Rushmore creators. Okay. Um, damn, dude. Okay. Um, this is, this is going to be a right now. Okay. So this right is, you know, April, 2024. 
right now, the people that are inspiring me on a monthly basis, Jason Aaron, Scott Snyder, um, Kelly Thompson, and oh man, you're going to make me pick a fourth. Um, I'll go Gail Simone. Okay. Um, I'm, I put you on a uh, rocket space shuttle to Mars and you can only take five books with you. What are you taking? Oh, no, I'll, 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 be, I'll be nice and I'll allow you to take full runs of stuff. Okay. Um, all right. So you said book, so I thought bound. Um, so I'm going to go with um, Lamb from uh, Christopher Moore, one of okay. absolutely the best books I've ever read. Uh, you mentioned runs, so I will go with Jason Aaron Scalped. Uh, because I feel like Scalped is one of the one of the runs of books that there wasn't one wasted issue, and I dare to say not one wasted page on all of that. Um, Motor Girl by Terry Moore. Um, yeah, I would go with Motor Girl or um, Strangers in Paradise. Uh, I've realized discovering dis discovering Strangers in Paradise afterwards. Terry Moore's the guy. I think I'd like to be like, he is someone who can put the weirdest stories together and smash you in the heart when you least expect it. Motor girl crushed me. Um, and I would recommend that book, you know, to, to anyone. Um, so much so that I actually bought pages from that book. That's how much I loved it. Um, and you know what? It's a classic Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, question number three. Uh, I think we're on three. Um, favorite, you know, favorite vampire stories, authors. Uh, you know, the, the first Blade movie is still a banger. Absolute, mm -hmm. you know, batshit, beautiful banger. Um, so that's it. And every now and then my wife will get back into true blood. I'm like, you know what? True blood was a good time. That was a fun, <laughs> fun run. I remember going to San Diego comic-con right before that launch. And there were banners everywhere. True blood, true blood. It's like, what the hell is that? You know, smash cut three years, three months later. It's like, Oh, that's what that was. So okay. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, okay. Uh, well, we'll do one more. Um, if if it's given the opportunity, I know you know working on your own creative stuff. Is there any like a is there any character Marvel, DC, or any property that you would love to kind of put your twist on? I have a Doctor Strange story that I would love to tell. Absolutely love to tell. Um, and my dream artist for that would be Steve Lieber. Um, mm -hmm. Steve, uh, did the superior foes of Spider-Man. That's where Steve's been around forever. He's, he's done amazing work. Superior foes was my introduction to him. And I love that book. I love Steve's comedic timing and storytelling. And this, this story I have for, uh, for Dr. Strange, uh, it'd be, it'd be a perfect annual story, right? Like 40 okay. pages, 48 pages. Um, yeah, that's, that's the one that like, you know, I have and every now I'm like, eh, maybe I just file off the uh, serial number and figure out how to tell it, tell it on my own. But yeah. Yeah. All right, so, uh, why don't you take us out of the show by giving a pitch for the, the campaign and where people can find you on social media? Yeah. Uh, if you want to follow me, you know, for more day to day stuff, I'm on Twitter. That's, that's where I live for better or for worse. Uh, and it's at Lazy Horde, L-A-Z-Y-H-O-R-D-E. Uh, if you'd like to check out the books that I've created, uh, you can find them all at homelesscomics.com. And there you can download a free PDF of all the books. Um, so you can get a free preview, all of them, and then hit the shop. And I, like I said, from right over there, I will send you whatever you want signed. Um, and then Vampires on Mars, like I said, it is a book I am... It, it it's a B movie story with a bigger question to it um, created by people who are very good at their job. And, you know, again, going back to Fernando, I think it's a perfect, uh, beautiful canvas for his type of storytelling, big, energetic, funny, and, you know, will literally rip your throat out uh, when you least expect it. It was a ton of fun to work on. Uh, I want to tell this whole story because I know where it goes and it just gets 
crazier and crazier. And you can find us now on Kickstarter. And like we mentioned earlier, this is kind of like the quiet period. So uh, anybody that comes aboard now, you're going to be a huge help keeping our momentum together. And I will love you for forever and a day. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you for taking the time to join us. And maybe we'll we'll definitely have to have you back at some point, maybe with the next book or, you know, maybe with, you know, as you kind of get wrap up the series, but, uh, you know, thank you for taking the time for to sit down with us and good luck on the rest of the campaign. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me back. All right.